Hi, my name is Jam Demirjovo. Today I'm going to be demonstrating you how to get uh, data from an on-premise SQL server to an Azure SQL database um, using ADF. Before going into the demonstration part, I'd like to go through the, the behind-the-scenes components and let's start with the, the easiest one, SQL Server. On the SQL Server side, just make sure that you have you're allowing remote connections. In other words, you come to the properties and come to connections and make sure this checkbox is checked. Otherwise, you won't be able to connect your server. And also, there are some TCP IP settings that you need to be aware of in order to make this one happen as well. Just make sure you are able to connect through SQL Server Agent. The next thing that you need to do is um, on the SQL Azure side. How you're going to do that is you come to um, azure.microsoft.com and then this will be your portal. What you're going to select is the SQL databases. And then um, there are two things. I think these are uh, a little bit convoluted. I don't like it this way, but that's how Microsoft designed it. Um, first, you need to create the, the server. So here I have Jam SQL Server. And then underneath that server, you are going to have a database called whatever the database you want. In my case, it's Azure DB. Um, the most important thing here is you will get a uh, username and password and also you need to be aware of this configuration. Um, I click on the server and then click on configure. These are the IP addresses that are allowed to access the server. So by default none of them is available. So you need to open the IP addresses so that um, we can think about this as the whitelisted IP addresses so that uh, you can connect to uh, the SQL server from your local box. Um, and if you want to run the, uh, the Windows Azure services on that uh, SQL Azure, then make sure you select yes on Windows Azure services. Otherwise, your Azure SQL database is not going to be accessible. So just be aware of those. So this is the Azure SQL side, what you guys need to do. Now let's talk about our um, our demonstration. So in this demonstration, I have a SQL database, which is a test database called test, and it's on my local server. And I have a table called stock price. Here's my SQL database, and this is the data. I have about 7,326 rows of data about a particular stock price. Uh, starting from 1986 and it goes like that just for demonstration purposes and that was the um, the on-premise site and now here as you can see by the way I will show you how to connect let me disconnect from this one first and then you come to the database engine what you need to do is you need to take uh, whatever the server name is and then dot database dot windows dot net um, comma fourteen thirty three. This is the port that that needs to be open. Um, I think you can change it, but I'm just using the default one. And here you type your password, and voila, we are at the SQL Azure site. And here I have almost the same database. It's called Azure DB, and the the table is called Stock Price. If I select star, I have a bunch of things already populated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just truncate it so that we don't have anything. Yep. So now I'm also going to make sure that this one is the Azure SQL side. Okay. Cool. Now, let's go through each and every component. Um, the first one is the, the local stock, uh, stock table. This is my local server. And in order to get this one, what I did was I created my link services. Um, the first thing you need to do before even creating the, the link service is the, the data, uh, gateway. Um, this is the, the application that runs on the client side and ADF 
connects to this gateway in order to connect to the final server. In my case, since my gateway uh, and the server, the SQL server is residing on the same box, um, essentially they are the same. The link servers, the link server definition and the gateway definition are pointing to the same box. But in production, you can have one gateway and you can have multiple link servers that are pointing to this gateway because you might have multiple uh, on-premise SQL servers or on-premise um, locations, file server locations that you want to pull data from. Hence, you can use just a single gateway to access to all those resources. So one gateway can serve to many link servers. Just be aware of that. In order to create this gateway, what you need to do is you click on New Data Gateway, and it is going to open up. Let's click on. Click on it. it is going to ask you for a name. Let's call it My Data Gateway. You click on OK, and then this is when you're doing it for the first time. You need to install. Um, the gateway application and the gateway application looks like this um, and once you install it it is going to have a key um, if you can use that key if not just take this key and change the key over here these things need to be equal to each other in other words this key should be used on this gateway because it's particularly designed for it Otherwise, the gateway becomes unavailable and unregistered, so just be aware of that fact. And you may need to stop and restart service between cha while changing uh, keys. And here, for instance, I, I didn't register my gateway, hence it is complaining about it. Just be aware of that one. Now, the second thing that you need to be aware of is the Azure Link Service. How do I get that one? I click on New Data Gateway again. But this time, let's say Azure Gateway. This time I click on OK. And, oh, I'm sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. I am going to delete this one. Sorry. Um, a new data store. They're changing the link service to data store now. That's what it's called. Um, Azure Linked. Server, service test, and then you can change. Uh, you can pick a type from here. You can select an Azure storage. This is the the blob storage. You can select an Azure SQL database, a SQL server. This is an on-premise one, and file system on-premise one. You can even connect to a, a Oracle database now. They are supporting it. So in our case, when you need to select Azure SQL database. And what you need to do is, in my case, it was SQL uh, Gem SQL Server. Um, my database was Azure DB. Um, my username was Gem, and my password. If I hit OK, then it creates a new one. Since I don't need to create a new one, I'm just going to skip this step. Now, after we create the the link services, we can worry about uh, uh, the data sets. There are two data sets available. One of them is the um, local stock table. Um, what you need to be aware of is these are the columns. You just need to set the, the location as on-premise SQL Server table location and set the link service name as local SQL Server on-premise link service. This is the link service that we created over here. The names should be equal to each other. And um, I set it, the frequency to be hourly, which means it's going to create 24 slices because the interval is also set, also set to 1. And since this is an input table, I set to wait on external null so that it's, uh, it becomes ready, ready automatically the minutes I, in, uh, I create this uh, new data set. The, the next one is the Azure SQL, da uh, SQL table. And the only difference between the first one is I selected Azure SQL Table Location as the type and Azure SQL Link Service as this guy over here as the link service name. 
sorry, my telephone is ringing. So those are the two things that are slightly different. Now, the last thing that we need to do is the, the copy activity itself. And it's pretty straightforward. It is really easy to do. You just say, hey, I'm creating a copy activity. And the type of the copy activity is this. Um, the, the source of the copy activity is a SQL source. And here's my particular uh, query. And then, which I'm selecting, select 1000 from uh, stock price. And then I'm putting into an Azure database uh, a table sync. And here I define my um, tables, my input and output table. My input table is local stock table. My output table is Azure SQL stock table. Other than that, um, if you want, you can uh, define your start date and end dates of your pipeline right at this stage, or you can define it um, after you create your pipeline. What I usually do is I usually create the, uh, the pipelines using this new UI editor and then move them to um, a PowerShell plus JSON files um, combination so that I have a way of storing the data, uh, storing the, the metadata. So just be aware of that. So once everything is done, you just need to do one more thing. SQL Azure, the minute you create something, a table, you need to create also a clustered index and a primary key. So I created the stock price table and then I added the date as the primary key and it is also um, a clustered index. You can see it from here, PK clustered index. So now let's check our table. I also um, behind the scenes it's running so that's why it's adding some values. I just truncated it. Now there is nothing in this table. Yep. So let's go to over here come over to my diagram. I can double click on this one. These are the slicers that are available and what I'm going to do is I'll just choose one of them and click on run. In about right now it's pending execution in a couple seconds uh, I don't know how long it took last time in about a minute it is going to start to, to execute the um, the, the query that I just wrote and start populating the, the, uh, the database on the, on the SQL side. Um, what else I can talk about? The, the gateway supports both SQL authentication and Windows authentication. Um, I'm sorry, the gateway supports only Windows authentication, but when you are connecting to a SQL server through a link service, you can connect either through a SQL authentication or a Windows authentication. So wh whichever you prefer, it's available for you to, to pick and choose. Um, other than that, pretty much that's about it. Um, it is pretty straightforward, as I said. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to write me at cemd at abacusdms.com or you can leave a comment to this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.